Gr greetings. Uh, my name is Joe Rogowski. I'm with the NBA Players Association and the PA. Um, and I'd like to thank the ELPA for uh, having me uh, speak today. Um, one of the topics that they um, asked me to present on and just discuss a little bit of how um, it came to be was our second opinion list. Obviously, that's something that um, I think the European uh, Players Association teams are looking at possibly doing and just some of the things that we learned from implementing that in our last uh, collective bargaining agreement, the CBA. Um, my background uh, before we start and I, before I discuss um, the uh, second opinion uh, list is uh, I, I, I worked in the NBA prior to working for the Players Association. I worked with teams. Um, I worked for eight years with the Orlando Magic uh, during the years of like 2005 to 13. Um, and then after that, um, and my job there was a strength and conditioning coach. I'm also a, a physio. Um, and then from there, I went to the Houston Rockets. I was with them for a couple of years uh, as director of performance, also physio as well while I was there. And that's when the uh, Players Association contacted me uh, to see if I would uh, be their director of sports medicine to represent our players' uh, uh, best interest from a medical perspective. Obviously, you know, all our teams have trainers and doctors, um, and our players were looking for representation on their side. And given the fact that I was in the league for 10 years, it, you know, sort of gave me a head start of, you know, knowing what some of our issues were already had the relationships and the networks to um, make it, make it an easier transition. Obviously it's been a learning experience uh, working for the players association. You have to wear many different hats. Um, for example, I, I talk to agents on a daily basis, work with the team's medical staff, work with uh, administration uh, uh, lawyers, uh, for, you know, writing protocols. So it's, it's, it's wearing many different hats, knowing, you know, what, um, what group is, uh, what each individual group is looking for and, and, how, and trying to, you know, bring everybody together. One of the benefits having worked with the teams is I, I, I was able to see firsthand how the second opinion was, uh, was, 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 was going to happen regardless and was already happening in the NBA. Um, but if, you know, but I also saw where it needed some tweaking. Um, at the time, and this was about seven, eight years ago, um, I, I remember a case where we had a player that whose agent, who had a younger agent that was newer to the game, um, that didn't know where to send his player. And unfortunately, sent him to a doctor that uh, most medical people in our profession wouldn't have sent the player to. And it was a lot of uh, back and forth and and uh, trying to educate the player and the agent and, and work with this, this doctor that may not have uh, worked with in our, in our uh, uh, arena before. And so, you know, seeing that, you know, I, I knew from there, you know, it was, it was a real benefit to help the, not only the players, but their agents and, and give them direction. And like I said, you know, this was, this was going in this direction anyways. Um, some of the bigger agencies, uh, here we're already doing second opinions on all their players. Um, and, you know, even some of those, you know, we, you know, there, there were times where we said to ourselves, you know, on the team side, well, yeah, I wish they wouldn't have sent him to this guy. Cause we know that this doctor is say, for example, a, a surgery first doctor and you go there, you're getting surgery. Uh, we've all seen that. Um, you know, so, you know, that's where I, I thought I could, you know, help out when we were doing the CBA and working with the NBA, that this was also on their radar of, hey, how can we perhaps put this in a better um, uh, situation for our players and the team so that we can work on this to, together and co be collaborative. So I, I will say, you know, the NBA and the PA really worked on this collaborative list of uh, experts in different fields um, that, you know, each side had to agree on and there were certain criteria that we were looking for. Um, one thing that, um, you know, one, one thing, you know, working with the, with the teams and, and seeing the, um, the, the situations that would arise that could be problematic is it was, it was important for us to find doctors that, you know, not only were um, good, good surgeons, um, you know, primarily our, our, our list is made up of surgeons, uh, orthopedic surgeons, uh, but we also have other doctors in other specialty areas like cardiac and um, and that sort. But um, it was important that, you know, the doctors that we found, we identified, 
um, knew, uh, you know, a couple, you know, had a couple of characteristics. Um, they were obviously uh, well regarded as, as a surgeon and, and, and for their diagnostic abilities, but also they understood the environment and the sport world um, and that they're familiar with athletes because obviously, you know, that's a, that's a different realm that, uh, you know, some doctors that aren't in that area, you know, sometimes don't understand how things uh, are, are managed. So that made things a little bit easier because, um, you know, team doctors, I think from where, where I started uh, 10 years ago have really changed in the sense that, um, whereas it was more of a, you know, they, they weren't as well, some of them, not all of them, but some of them may not have as been as welcoming, um, say like a decade ago. Now it's, it's pretty understood that any player that needs to get surgery is getting a second opinion. And it's, it's quite ironic now that the, you know, the team doctors, you know, you, you find this with the, the, the good doctors that, you know, they actually encourage the players to get a second opinion. Um, cause they want to, you know, cause there's so much on the line. They want to make sure um, that they're, you know, they're, they're on the right you know, side as well, as far as, you know, this guy's uh, uh, medical outcomes. Um, and that just, and, and I would say 99% of the time um, when they, the player does go see the second opinion that's on our list and, you know, the, of the vetted surgeons um, it's just confirming what the team docs already thought and already said. Um, and now it's actually gotten to the point where I, I you know, from when I started in the league, I, I would say the majority of, you know, big surgeries like your ACLs and shoulders and, and that sort were done by the team doctors. Um, now there's probably, you know, a handful of doctors that are not associated with the team that do all the surgeries. So it's very, very, very rare nowadays to have the team doctor actually do the surgery. And that's actually been um, one of the things that uh, teams have embraced. Uh, again, early on, they weren't as open to that, but teams have, have learned to embrace that where they can, you know, um, they, they don't expect the team doctor to do the surgery. Obviously the team doctor is still a huge part, uh, still a vital part. I mean, that's the person that the team trusts. So, and that's their expert. So they'll obviously ask questions, and, um, you know, the team doctor will, you know, will acknowledge, Hey, you know, obviously this guy is the, you know, on the second opinion list, this, th this guy or, or, or female is the best surgeon, uh, to do this. And they'll work with that surgeon, uh, wherever they might be to, to do, to do the surgery. So it's, it, it's worked out well where teams don't look at it anymore, um, as a, a, a negative thing or that they're going around them, but they're doing it in more of a collaboration. And, and I think that's sort of how we started it off in the beginning of working with the, the NBA, working with the team staff. There was a lot of stuff done on the front end to make sure that this was, uh, you know, a fluid situation and everybody was on board because again, we, we knew where it was going. You know, obviously the NBA is, is very, very agent driven. Uh, so it was going to happen. Uh, regardless, you know, if we could just come together and figure out, hey, let's, you know, give a little bit of direction because, you know, use our resources and our network of, of all these top doctors. Uh, so that's, that's sort of how, you know, we started off with, you know, an idea, um, saw an issue, saw a problem, saw where things were headed and moved all the way to, okay, how do we address this? Uh, let's put this in the CBA, you know, provide this to the team, uh, to, to the, our, our players and to their agents. Um, and now it's a very, uh, very utilized resource. Um, I, I would say probably once or twice a week, I'll get a call from an agent. Um, a player has an injury and, um, you know, wants to get a second opinion, especially in cases of surgery, we're always getting second opinions for that. Um, and that, that's a, a, you know, a, now a resource, a tool uh, for the agents and the players uh, to use, and they don't have to use it. Um, there are some teams that have um, the doctor that is specializes in that area. So the, uh, the agent and the, and the player may forego, you know, getting a second opinion, which is fine. Uh, but they just know that they have this resource and, and it's not used in every situation. Um, you know, we, we have a, a, a criteria that I could send anybody, uh, that would like to, after the call, uh, after this uh, conference, um, any of the information, um, of, of what it takes to enact the second opinion, because we just want to make sure people understood, you know, it wasn't just for like a, a bump or a bruise, you know, it was for more significant things that would keep you out, you know, out of, out of competition for extended period of time or would require surgery. So there are little rules that the, uh, you know, legal put together to make sure that, you know, we're all on the same page for that. But, um, like I said, it's a, it's a very utilized, uh, um, tool and, uh, and resource for our teams. And I think it's, 
uh, for the betterment of our league, um, not just for the players, but also for the teams. Because again, you know, with, with these million dollar, multi-million dollar decisions, everybody wants to be on the same page and have confidence that they are um, all on the same, you know, all on the same page and going the same direction. And, and I think that's what we would be, we've been able to achieve. Um, I'll give, a, you know, sometimes I get asked, you know, for an example of, you know, when, when you know, how, you know, the benefits of this and, you know, one success um, story that, you know, I, I could, you know, sort of give to illustrate, you know, how this you know, has helped our players. Um, we had a case, uh, it was right after the CBA, we had a case where, uh, where a player um, was coming up on free agency. So, you know, that's a, that's a very, uh, very ner uh, nerve wracking time period for him and his agent. And he had a sustained an injury. Um, it was a, uh, um, you know, a, a soft tissue injury of, um, uh, 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 of the groin area. And, you know, one of the, um, uh, recommendations. Uh, so they, the agent went through the normal procedures with the team and, and they went to this, uh, to a doctor that, you know, recommended surgery. And, but, you know, knowing, you know, knowing ahead of time that that's probably what was going to be the outcome with this doctor. Cause that's, you know, that was the, the, uh, normal procedure. Um, this, the, the, you know, agent, you know, reached out to me and said, Hey, listen, you know, we've got him signed up for, you know, Friday to get the surgery. Um, you know, which is, you know, again, normal for, for that injury. Uh, any thoughts before we go ahead with this? And I said, well, listen, we just, you know, enacted the second opinion list. Um, there are other specialists that might be more conservative in uh, treatment that we put together. Doesn't hurt to go see one of these uh, other doctors, just get a second opinion. Um, it's perfectly, you know, allowed now and legal in the NBA and encouraged. Um, so, you know, why not take advantage of it? Um, you know, worst he can do is say he agrees with you and you might not see, you know, see it from a different angle. So we did that. And, and the player uh, flew to go see this uh, other physician and coming out of that, the physician um, said, listen, you know, seeing what he has right now, and I, I would be almost pressed to say, Hey, don't do surgery on this. Um, you know, let's see how it plays out. And again, when, you know, back to what I was saying uh, earlier, you know, one of the things, you know, the characteristics that we're looking for, for our doctors, um, you know, that they understood our game, uh, they were, you know, they were good surgeons to begin with, but they, they also, you know, looked at it from all sides and, and were conservative in treatment. We just didn't want, you know, a cut first doctor. Um, so it was good to get that opinion. And um, now, mind you, the, the doctor that uh, recommended surgery was not with the team. He was a, a, another a separate doctor. Uh, one that wasn't on our second opinion list, but someone that was known for uh, being a specialist in this area. Uh, so, you know, after the player uh, heard this and the agent, we got together, uh, myself, and uh, we also have an orthopedic um, a consultant with us at the Players Association um, that, you know, we got on a call and just talked through it and said, hey, here are the options. Uh, this is what this doctor said. This is what the, this other doctor said. Uh, there's, you know, a couple of different uh, approaches we can take with this, you know, it's really up to you. Uh, and again, unfortunately, you know, he was coming up on free agency. So, um, and, and looking at a very, very lucrative, lucrative uh, contracts. Um, and so, uh, you know, it, it was, you know, a group decision and, uh, you know, inevitably the player made the decision that said, Hey, you know, listen, if, if, if surgery isn't, you know, a slam dunk, we have to do that. Um, I would like to hold off because I'm feeling pretty good right now. Um, and sometimes, you know, this is one of the things I always tell the, the physicians, or I'm sorry, the agents, is sometimes surgeries make things worse, um, especially, you know, uh, with, you know, some of these soft tissue uh, surgeries. Um, you know, there's many times where I've seen, you know, uh, I, you know, that's one of the things I have to educate the, the uh, players and the agents is surgeries doesn't fix, don't always fix everything. And sometimes it could actually make things worse. So, you know, having that conversation, uh, uh, you know, back to story, the, the player did, didn't get surgery, ended up sitting out um, um, and just rehabbed. And it uh, went really well. And he ended up uh, that summer signing a very, very lucrative contract um, for four or five years. And uh, I will say, um, and this was probably about uh, seven, eight years ago, like I said at the beginning, he's never had a problem since. So, which shows that, you know, we, you know, he made the right decision in being conservative and not getting the surgery, you know, cause I worry, you know, uh, you know, he, he, he played, never had an issue with it again. 
never had problems. Um, and you know, I always worry if he would have gotten the surgery, would that, and you know, could that have caused other problems? You know, now we're looking at biomechanical issues because, you know, the soft tissue muscle was worked on. So that's, you know, one example of, you know, just having the, that second opinion, having a vetted second opinion that everybody trusts that everybody's on board with, um, really came, uh, uh, to benefit, uh, one of my players, but we, you know, we see this every, every week in the, in the NBA with our guys, just, you know, getting second opinion and just, again, it offers a sounding board for them and just to get, you know, another impression. And, and like I said, 99% of the time, it's just them agreeing with what's already been recommended, but it's always good just to hear it from a, another voice. Um, so again, that, that's, you know, how we came about with the second opinion in the NBA and, and how, you know, I think it's been uh, fairly successful and, and it's been a tool again for the agents and the players to use. Um, feel free, obviously, you know, uh, we're, you know, we're here in the U S you know, feel free. If you have any questions, uh, if you guys do have players over here, um, you know, I've had, you know, European players that were over here for some reason that needed to see a doctor or whatever. Um, you know, I, that I, obviously our second opinion list is not something that we, we hide, uh, you know, the more people that use it are, are welcome to use it if you want. Um, you know, these are just some of the docs that we've seen and had, uh, you know, good success with. Um, I, you know, I could share that with anyone. Um, you know, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, you know, I want to thank the ELPA again for allowing me to speak. And, you know, if I could be a, any, a resource to you guys and help you guys in any way, please, you know, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, again, uh, uh, Joe Rogowski, I'm with MBPA um, and look forward to hearing from you guys. Thank you.